Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Well, I've got your attention. I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch store on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. Alyssa Milano, actress and a communist activist, tweeted this little gem yesterday. Take note, America, this is what fighting for critical change looks like. Hashtag free Hong Kong. And this was accompanied by this video. I've got a still of it here, which shows a massive number of people protesting what amounts to be a Chinese takeover of Hong Kong. Now, to show you just how clueless and tone deaf Milano's tweet was requires a little bit of a history lesson. Hong Kong is what's called a special administrative region in southern China. It has a population of about 7.4 million people and is one of the most densely populated places on Earth. Hong Kong was originally a very low population fishing region until it became a British colony at the end of the First Opium War in 1842. Under British rule, Hong Kong escaped the Chinese communist takeover by Mao Zedong. And as always scrolls past on my lower third, socialism and communism always fail, killing millions in the process. In this case, at least 65 million Chinese were killed. The number may be as high as 80 million. Nobody's entirely sure. Now, being under British rule, Hong Kong escaped this. It was the sole region connected to China that had a free market. While China struggles with massive poverty to this day, Hong Kong became a prosperous economic powerhouse. Millions of people have fled to China to Hong Kong over the decades. Hong Kong was ceded to the Chinese in 1997. From then until fairly recently, the Chinese pretty much left Hong Kong alone. They allowed it to remain a free market and to continue to be a prosperous economic powerhouse. However, it was only a matter of time before China decided that it would start flexing its more muscle over Hong Kong. I'm frankly amazed that it took 20 years for the Chinese to do it. Where things stand today is how it looks behind me on my green screen, with thousands, hundreds of thousands of people demonstrating against Chinese communism. Alyssa Milano, on the other hand, is a leftist agitator. Milano started as a child actor who was one of the very few who transitioned to adult roles and has appeared to have kept her sanity mostly intact. Now, for a child star to transition to adult roles is very rare. Most of them just reach a certain age and never work again. The transition uh, from having armies of yes-men and hangers-on and crowds just hanging on their every word comes to an abrupt end, and they discover that they have no real friends and no one cares about them anymore. At all. And it really screws them up psychologically for life. Now, for a female to do it is really, really rare. There are few roles for women in Hollywood in any case. Most of them just age out of ingenue roles and find themselves unemployable. Now, Milano has maintained her good looks even at age 46, and apparently not without surgical assi assistance. So, she's not getting the same roles that she did 20 years ago, but she continues to work nonetheless. My suspicion is that by age 50, she'll have aged out and won't be acting much anymore. But she's also transitioned into directing and producing, which is probably the best career move she could make. You know, women mostly age out in Hollywood and have little chance of success in that cesspool. Now, I largely remember Milano <laughs> for the picture that you see behind me here. Uh, it's from an episode of the 1998 to 2006 TV series Charmed, in which she starred. To be honest, Charmed was one of my guilty pleasures, but not for the stories. Call me sexist, but when you star three beautiful women in generally sexy outfits, you're going to attract red-blooded heterosexual males, and I'm sure that was their intention. So, sue me. In any case, Milano grew up in Hollywood, and she has an only ever known an extremely myopic view of life. As I always remind people, 
Hollywood to California. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy, except for Washington, D.C. It is a place where handshakes are meaningless, backstabbing is commonplace, and rape and child molestation rule the day. And it's been this way since it was founded. And she also grew up in an extremely competitive business. Now, some of my longtime viewers know, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, I was once an actor, but I wasn't that great of one, and I decided that I liked money a lot more, and I went on to a successful career in IT. However, the acting profession isn't what most people imagine. For the overwhelming majority, acting isn't about starring roles and fame in the red carpet. It's about waiting tables, acting classes, and auditions that go absolutely nowhere. For every actor you see on a red carpet, there are a thousand that'll spend their lives waiting tables. So I don't begrudge Milano her success as an actress. She's been extremely fortunate. But she grew up in a horrible place that chews up and spits out people like her every day. And she grew up surrounded by communists and socialists. You see, almost every actor in America is downright communist. That applies even to the level which I was working, which was just summer stock and dinner theaters in Nebraska, Iowa, and Missouri. I was a communist myself when I was an actor. Fortunately, I did grow out of it and became a libertarian. But it is one of the reasons that even though I'm retired and have a lot more life experience and probably be a better actor than I was in my 20s, I won't go back to even community theater. I know that I'd be surrounded by people with whom I fundamentally disagree, and I'd end up either biting off my tongue or arguing with them every day, all the time. And who the hell needs that? But all that Melissa, Melissa Milano knows is a horrible place to work surrounded by communists. She knows no other way of life, and it completely blinds her. Moreover, actors are... <laughs> notoriously narcissistic. It is almost a career requirement because only someone with a massive belief in their own talent could spend a lifetime waiting tables and never getting acting gigs. It's probably even worse for actors uh, who are like Alyssa, who make it big, because not only must she be narcissistic as a career tool of her trade, she now has personal proof that she's amazing, precisely because she's been so successful. This is why successful actors come off as complete jerks whenever they open their mouths. They consider themselves better than anyone because they're more successful than 99% of actors in the United States. And in their own mind, that means that they're better than anyone else in the world. So when you get a narcissistic communist like Alyssa Milano, she naturally thinks that anywhere you see a crowd of demonstrators, they must want communism or at worst, heavy socialism. She has no idea that Hong Kong demonstrators are against everything that she believes in. Hence, probably the most clueless and tone deaf tweet in human history. <laughs> Now, I don't follow Milano on Twitter, but I, occasionally I have people that I'm subscribed to enough that her more ridiculous communist screeds tend to be retreated. By the way, if you want to follow me, I am SYL Ranch on Twitter, and if you do follow me, I'll follow you right back. Because of the ludicrous nature of most of her positions, she gets pretty heavy pushback from people who disagree with her. And as almost everything else on Twitter, a lot of it is angry and toxic. Now, for a narcissist, this kind of pushback can be devastating. They expect to be lauded and rewarded, not derided and insulted. It runs totally counter to their proven by a success proof that they know better than almost anyone. So later yesterday, after almost everyone had, you know, she had gotten a lot of pit pushback about her stupid tweet, she tweeted this little missive. I know some of you dislike me, but understand I'm fighting for you too, that you might be free to be you, that you might not have to work so hard to put food on the table, that you can control your own destiny, free from discrimination, that you can live, just live, heart. Now I must admit, I feel a little bad for Alyssa. I understand where she's coming from, as I sort of used to be there. 
She's genuinely mystified and probably hurt that people just don't understand that her narcissism means she is fighting for the little guy. And as Alyssa, you know, the remainder of this video is to aimed straight at you. I doubt you'll ever see it, but hey, who knows? And if you do, hey, why don't you give me a call about appearing on your podcast, Sorry Not Sorry. Maybe you'd rather talk to a libertarian rather than the usual back patters that you have on. So, you know, call me. Anyway, Alyssa, let me walk through your tweets so maybe you'll feel a little better. Quote, I know that some of you dislike me. End quote. No, they don't really dislike you. They just can't stand your communism. They also don't like being lectured to about it. Now, a lot of them respond insultingly, but this is Twitter. If you decide to <laughs> care about what anyone says about you on Twitter, you're going to be unhappy indeed. But under and end quote, but understand, I'm fighting for you too. End quote. Now, actually, Alyssa, you, you're not. You're fighting for communism, a philosophy that killed between 100 million and 150 million people in the 20th century alone. You lived through that part of it. You should know better. The fact that you don't is because you've been surrounded by communists for your whole life. You need to get out of California for the remainder of your life and go somewhere else, almost anywhere else in the U.S. Now, I suggest South Dakota. I mean, you're living on a ranch right now anyway, and there's lots of property in South Dakota, and I promise you that it is a lot cheaper than California. Once you get out of the myopic view of the world that you've had for the last 46 years, you're going to get a much better understanding and clearer understanding of the world around you. So another quote, that you might be free to be you. End quote. Actually, Alyssa, we're already free to be ourselves. The problem is that you've been living in Hollywood, California, and you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. It may be difficult or impossible to be yourself there, but I assure you the rest of the country has very little problem with it. Quote, that you might not have to work so hard to put food on the table, end quote. Alyssa, there's absolutely nothing communism can do that will make this easier. In the Western world, we're all fat and happy, even most of our poor, because of the free market. The best thing that could happen would, to make it easier to put food on the table would be to repeal the 16th Amendment, which authorized taxation at the federal level. Without a federal income tax, people would have a lot more money. They could work less hours or even have a single family income with ease. Communism only gives to people after taking something away from them, and that's usually their money and freedom. And oftentimes, it's their lives. And then, quote, that you can control your own destiny free from discrimination, end quote. Again, communism doesn't accomplish this. <laughs> In any case, we're actually pretty free today. Now, I readily admit that there are pockets of racism, sexism, homophobia, etc. out there, but they're actually pretty small. Your problem is that you grew up in Hollywood, California. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. While, uh, you know, its stars preach to us about inclusiveness, the reality is that the entertainment business is one of the most discriminatory businesses that you can get into. Just look at your own body. Now, <laughs> I know that the camera adds about 10 pounds. And I know that while you look normal on screen, if I met you in person, you'd be skinny as a rail. I know that in order to keep your figure, you have essentially been starving your entire life. And that's all because if you allowed yourself to eat the way you want, you wouldn't get the roles you want. Hollywood discriminates against women based on their looks as a matter of course. Hollywood is one of the most inherently discriminatory places in the entire world world. Now, the rest of the world isn't like that. And again, I suggest moving out of California for the rest of your life. It will expand your myopic view of the world. Quote, that you can live, just live. End quote. Alyssa, we really don't have any problems with just living. You, you only think that we do. You need to get out of California and see the rest of the world. And by the way, heart to you as well. And that's all that I have to say about that. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. 
So, thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYO Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.